Hello, I'm Tanny. Welcome to another Pioneer video. Uh, today we're going to be playing more Mono Green Devotion with Outcaster Trailblazer. This uh, three drop 4 2 says when it enters the battlefield, uh, add one man of any color. And then when another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. And it also has plot. So, a couple different ways to cast it, a couple different ways to gain advantage off of it. We are going to be utilizing. Uh, the plot to ramp us into five drops. We're going to be utilizing the extra mana on turn number two or three when we cast it to play another one drop. And we're going to leverage the draw card ability by playing a large number of creatures that have four power naturally, like Old Growth Troll, Cavalier of Thorns, Ovenwad Oddity, and Voracious Hydra. Uh, the big card lacking from this build is the Storm the Festival. My recent playing with the deck found Storm the Festival to be quite lackluster, both rotting in hand in some spots, as well as uh, being relatively weak hits because we don't have Karn the Great Creator as a, you know, fastball to find off of it to just, like, hammer our opponents whenever we can minus it with a bunch of mana. Um, the last time I played the deck, I Stormed the Festival, I think, five times in my league, and I whiffed or hit only lands and creature or lands, elves, and wolf oil havens, I think three out of the five times, which maybe that's just, you know, bad luck or whatever. But I think it's also indicative of a lack of density of good hits. And I think that that's really what we need to uh, focus on. And that's why we're playing Voracious Hydra. I also cited in Voracious Hydra a lot against the uh, Slickshot Show Off decks to help out against uh, their aggressive starts. And I think that it's going to be, that's going to be fairly common. Um, if you do play Storm of the Festival, to have some sort of anti-creature pivot uh, for when you need to be able to interact with those creatures and Storm of the Festival is a little bit too slow or just, like, not good enough. We're also playing a couple copies of Sharp Eyed Rookie. This is an experimental two-drop that can uh, get pretty big pretty quickly and give us something to do with our mana. Since we're not playing Storm of the Festival, we require more mana sinks. That's why we're playing a second Overmold Oddity. Uh, that's why stuff like Lair of the Hydra is so important as well. Uh, our sideboard, we have three copies of Obstinate Bayloth. This is going to help out against the uh, Waste Knot decks. Uh, two Tranquil Frillback, an excellent Disenchant. Also, we just want a couple things to gain life, a couple things to Disenchant, a couple things to eat the graveyard. That's kind of what you're going to look for in green. That's stuff that green is good at. Tranquil Frillback does all three. Uh, Picker Poison, this is going to be mostly for Vane Ripper. Uh, one Cityscape Leveler. This one's for like the games that we plan on going long. It's great if our, our opponent has artifacts and enchantments that we need busting up. Two Unlicensed Hearse. This is mostly for Phoenix, but can come in against a number of Graveyard Strats. Two Stone Brain for combo decks. Not sold on Stone Brain. I had four in a previous build. I think three is maybe the right number, but two I'm pretty happy with. I've been unimpressed with it lately. Uh, because we're not playing Storm of the Festival, we also have a Graph Digger's Cage. I've been thinking about uh, playing a second one because we don't have uh, Storm of the Festival anymore. And then lastly, we have a second Besaju in the sideboard to bring in. Uh, for those of you who played Mono Green Devotion in the past, the biggest upgrade to this deck is absolutely Outcast Trailblazer. I've seen versions playing Leyline of the Guild Pact, and I'm convinced that Leyline of the Guild Pact is a bad card for the strategy because the games where you have Leyline and Nykthos and Elf, you're probably already winning with just Elf Nykthos, and the Leyline helps like juice your turn two and juice your turn threes, but, like, I don't really have that problem, right? I don't have problems winning the game when my elf gets untapped. I don't have problems using my mana on turn three and four when my elf survives. And because of that, I just think that the, the ley line to me is just a trap. And the real strength is from Outcast Trailblazer. And the reason why you're seeing a bunch of these decks pop up more recently is because of Outcast Trailblazer and, how, and because of how good it is in this specific shell. This is Monogreen Devotion. Let's play League. Uh, okay, we'll keep. I'm tricking myself into keeping hands that have two drops in them without elves. Shop Ride Rookie is just another card that's kind of wonky when your opponent just has removal spells in their deck because it dies to every removal spell. But maybe it just overloads them. And it's cheap. I mean, it costs two, but there's like no other good one drops in green other than the elves and oath. So what are you supposed to do, you know? Opponent has a stop during my draw set. Love it. Why no festival? I've talked about it a lot already, but um, without Karn, it's just a lot worse of a card. There were Storm in the Festivals where if you hit exactly Karn, you were in business. And that is no longer the case. There's no one card you can hit for it to be in business. The league I played yesterday had roughly 
I don't know, maybe Storm of the Festival was cast like six times, and I think it was bad four of the times in, in five matches I played. I watched uh, System Magic streaming it the other day, and they had similar experiences, but I don't think that they suggested cutting it, but I thought Voracious Hydra out of the board was great, and I wanted to see if Voracious Hydra would be better than it, because we're just doing the whole Pura Outcaster drawing a million cards thing. All right, so let's go Pura. Yeah, the this is the card that makes the deck good. It's not the ley line. It's this. Okay, we'll take the free land, and then now we'll play uh, Trailblazer Rookie. So Trailblazer will draw a card and get us some mana, and then we'll play Rookie off of it. I do think Ricky is really good against Fatal Push decks in general because our whole deck is bad against Fatal Push decks. Like, our stuff just dies, you know what I'm saying? Like, we have too many targets. The Mystics, the Sharp Eyes, the Outcast Trailblazers, you know? I was looking for just a... Whatever creatures that cost four power... Or that were four power for Kiora and Outcast Trailblazer, and I just didn't find very many that looked viable. But Trailblazer itself is exceptional. Yeah, I agree. And I think it makes it so that you don't need the Storm of the Festivals, but I could be thinking about it backwards, where together they just create a torrent of card advantage. But that's not really what I've been experiencing. My experience has been that Storm the Festival has hit Land Wolf Willow Haven too often. Or Elf Wolf Willow Haven. You just don't have a high density of four drops that matter. And so Storm, like, you know, the same way the Collective Company can be bad when your deck is all one drops, for example. Like, sometimes Collective Company is bad in Amalia. Most people still play Amalia because Amalia is just, like, so powerful when it hits. The same way Mono Green is still just so powerful when it hits. So I definitely understand the the want there. All right, so let's go Oath of Nyssa, looking for either Kiora or another land, and then we can do some stuff. I'm going to take the Beseju, because Larianer's tapped. And now I'll just play Oddity and Attack for a bunch. The fact that this gets bigger and gets a counter uh, and gets a token is really nice. So here we can be aggressive, and when we flood out, we'll have some clues. So, so far, Sharp Ride Ricky looking pretty cool. They're probably going to draw a card with Maze Mine and then maybe Wrath Me. Is it time to shift to Coco? That's a thought I had the other night as well. Um, I would need to find a good three-cost mana sink for Coco so that I could do combo kills because you can't play Oddity at that point. But I do think that there's potential for a Coco out cast Trailblazer Kiora deck. But I don't know that you can play Kiora in the same deck as Collect a Company. I think that might be a little too non bow ish and Wolf of Haven, which I think is just an exceptional card in mono green most of the time because it's just ramp that dodges and uh, removal and turns on Nykthos. All right, let's go Cavalier. We'll get a clue. We'll go and get Elf down as well. Yeah, I agree, Aaron. I'm excited about uh, Outcast Trailblazer. Outcast or Trailblazer? I think Outcast or Trailblazer is just awesome. And now it's just about figuring out the best shell for it. And it's just such a... It just requires building the deck in a different way. The same way Kior and Karn required us to build the deck in a certain way, too. And Voracious Hydra might not be the answer. Voracious Hydra might need to be a sideboard card... You know, and we might need to go back to like a Vivian Reed or, or Vivian Arcbow Ranger or whatever, you know. Sure. 
Sharp eyed rookie with Coco sounds awesome though. Maybe we'll work on that after this league. Especially if this is a short league, like if we get whipped again like last league. We'll maybe try a Coco version. I think the trick with that will be figuring out how to use Nyctos mana with Coco. Because then it's all about uh, Sharp-Eyed Ricky, uh, Plukernos 3-drop, other mana sinks, other big mana sinks. Okay, they get two creatures here. It's okay. If we draw Nyctos, we can flip this. I think we can flip this with any land. Augur Bottom. Augur Bottom's interesting. Oh, we actually just had the mana to do it. That's probably a mistake. Okay, well, now we'll just really do it. Just flip the oddity? Yeah. We should have just flipped the oddity, but I assume that they had a kill spell for it. I also didn't know that I had seven. Uh, okay, so we do want pick your poison. Grill back. Bail off. Seiju, something like this. Probably Cityscape as well. Voracious. Rookie seems good. I think we can probably cut two elves. Make their fatal pushes a bit worse. I don't mind cutting all the Ulmod oddies in the matchup because they're going to just make us trip down to our bare bones in terms of... In terms of, like, uh, raw resources. Could you still have champion Tuk Tuk Rumble Fort? Yeah, the, it's not about haste. It's about uh, using Nykthos mana. And if we don't have any way to use Nykthos mana, it's not going to function. And you could, I mean, I, I think Outcast is great with Nyxos. Yeah, I don't think Ronus is enough, though. There, there's been this style of deck in the past, and the Outcaster just is like a, a perfect uh, way to do it again. But this requires some finesse and deck building. Like, it's so hard to find the Coco line mix, right? All right, so we'll go Wolf Willow. Oh, it's looking for a one drop or something to do for next turn. And we'll just go ahead and do... Elf, so we can play this turn in case one of our elves dies. We can still play Cavalier next turn. And if they mine rot us, we'll go Bailoth Forest, but they're probably not going to mine rot us because they know I have the Bailoth. And so even if they Liliana, they're going to mine us. The time for Shaman of the Forgotten Ways. I don't think so. That, one, that one's really good into ramping into seven drops, six and sevens. I know that the biorhythm ability is good, but I don't think it's good enough. Yeah, maybe maybe it's just Coco in the deck. Maybe it's just Storm. Maybe it's just Storm the Festival. No land, huh? All right, I'm just going to play this 4-4. Four, four. Last cards of land, doesn't matter. They might also think that I drew another one, so they might not do anything about... They might not make me discard. Moonslide says, Made the call to ride or die with blood control for this season. Hope it does me well. Nice. No More Lies is a powerful magic card, and I hope that you enjoy yourself. Yeah, I think Dustwatch Recruiter is fine. It's just like a, a relic of the past. You know? Like, it's not about finding any mana sink. I don't know. 
Like, um... Uvenwald Oddity is very close to, like, the perfect mana sink for Mono Green, and it's still, like, not that good, I think, you know? Alright, so they do get mana off of this, and if it's... If they're able to bitter triumph this, that's bad. Oh, come on, Mike. You know how to do this. Come on, Jilly. All right, we need to draw some big baddies off the top. Yeah, lacking Storm in the Festival is kind of mid against the Trishan decks. So Moondris, was I doing wrong? The exclamation point goes before the word. The exclamation point starts the command. Exclamation point at the end of your word is just normal grammar. How does this pilgrim win? Yeah, I wish. Another waste not. Okay, so basically we can never draw cards again. I will definitely send the wolf at the lily. Hold back the elves this turn. Maybe play them next turn. All right, so let's attack with just the wolf. Hostile Investigator. Uh-oh. Okay, well... Not the best draw. I think I send two elves at the Lily. So we lose an elf, but we deal Lily one so we don't get ultimated. Investigator's nice. I mean, I think the card's pretty weak, all things considered. I'm much less afraid of it here than Shieldred. It's just, like, extra of the same effect, and they have so much of that effect that it's just, like... I don't know. And plus, after you do it, you don't get the advantage. You get uh, clues, which you have to spend mana for again. And with Castle Lockthwain, clues are just, like, pretty weak. Oh, it's a, it's a powerful card. I just don't think it's good in Waste Knot. I think Shieldred's great in Waste Knot because you... Strip them of everything that they have, and then, you know, you strip them of everything they have, and then you play Shieldred, and the game ends. All right, no attack here. Makes some sense, I guess. All right, well, we will probably lose this game. I'm going to concede, I think, next turn if I draw another brick. In race four runners be a win on the spot though. What are you talking about? We only have like four lands. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna concede now because we're gonna lose the rookie. Uh, all right. Uh, bring back in both the elves, Umwalds, the Wolf Willows. We're just gonna play our normal game plan. Uh, I think pick your poison sucks, but I think frillbacks good. So we'll keep the frillbacks and the obstinates. Guess I'll keep the level or two. Maybe the Oath of Nissas. We just need to, like, not draw them. Oath is not bad. I just don't really know what to cut here because I need, like, Baylos to pressure their discard effects, Trailblazer, Cure to draw cards, Old Growth to punish, Throwback, Mana Ramp. I don't like cutting Oath, though. Uh, I'll keep, I guess. Hopefully my Elf survives. If Elf... Survive if I if I don't get hit with Thoughtsies or Fatal Push on the first turn, that's kind of wild, but we'll see. Sir Wafts, thanks for the follow. 
Well, that was just yesterday, and it was just one guy who has only plays Commander or whatever. So it makes sense once you understand that. And I understood it pretty quick based on his questions once I realized he wasn't uh, trolling or whatever. All right, so we'll go Kiora Pass. We can't play Wolfalo plus Kiora this turn. And we don't have another one drop. Next turn, we can go Wolfalo Old Growth Troll. Or kick Fill back if they play Waste Knot. Nice. Let's do that instead. Land or not, we can do it. All right, so Wolfalo here. I will go. I guess we'll do both uh, destroy and gain life. All right, so we'll go destroy artifact or enchantment, gain four. So that waste not. I think waste would be so much better if they cut the waste knot and just put in good cards. I don't know. Maybe. I think waste knot gives the deck some like super juicy things to do on turns three, four, and five. Uh the the only replacement would be like creatures, you know, and you can play creatures in those slots or bank busters in those slots, and they would be fine, you know. But waste knot is like actually terrifying. You know, if they if they went turn two, waste not turn three, go blank, I, I would feel like I was dead. All right, so if we hit a land, we can also play Old Growth Troll. Everything is vulnerable to Extinction Event here, though, but everything is also drawing a card. Oh, I should have played my land. Man. Hunt. It's like the second time that's happened in the last two leagues where I played my land and then I drew Lair after. Just got to be aware of my land drops when I can be. So cross fingers, no extinction event. Extinction events, GG, everything else I think I'm fine with. Tried Raps Mono Blacklist and the Gift of Etherborns were so bad. Yeah, exactly. So here's Waste Nuts. And Thought Seize. So Cityscape Lover is going to go to the graveyard. We can put it into play and kill the Waste Knot, though, from the graveyard, as long as it doesn't get hit with Clean to Dust. All right, so we'll go flow to untap. Uh, let's play to elf, and then lair, and then next, if they kill something this turn, let's see. If they let us attack, we'll just go for the kill. Yeah, I'll just kill the token. We'll give him a power stone. This is a lethal attack, so. Even if they fatal push this, it's still 17. Classic Cityscape levelers. Keep, I guess. Clones on six. Do we just play them? Nova Ray, and now we're playing Nure, the Nair. Not the same person. Mirror, maybe? If they play an elf, I mean, I don't know what they're going to play here. Basic Forest is probably Mirror, you know. So they're going to play Wolfalo? No. Okay. So we'll go... Uh, Eora? And then I think I'm going to plot the Slick Shot or the Trailblazer because I don't have anything to do with the mana. 
And next turn I might be able to do something with the mana. And I, I'm not afraid of them killing or doing anything, and I, I don't necessarily want to attack next turn if they play some sort of four power creature, you know? Wolf we'll of first Oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was too too caught up in just doing this because this is the play pattern that I've been doing. You're right though. That was certainly a mistake. Okay, so let's go cast, draw, mana. Uh, Where are, you, where are you going? Let me do my thing! Let me do my thing! Oh, no fun. Bringing the leveler, maybe some fillbacks. Oh no, their kill was dead. They were dead. They were really dead, Scooter. But they just need to let me do my thing. Sharp by Ricky out in this matchup. Uh, Mulligan? 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 Keep? All right. Oh yeah, we're in trouble. I mean, this is the nut draw. Forest, Elf, Leyline, Nykthos, 5 drop. I'm not like, going to let you do fun stuff either. How much do we care about the Leyline? I guess we can just pick your poison a couple... And it stops the wolf willow as well. Where do you have the fill back? I like everything else though. All right, keep this one. Bunch of mana, but that's okay. Oh, good luck, Thunder. All right, well, we got a great start here. Let's just hope that we can draw anything to pay us off. Any big creature would be nice. Outcast Trailblazer would be real sick because it could chain us. Okay, so they don't have a land. Cityscape leveler, huh? Uh, all right, so let's go Wolf Willow. Elf. Two, how much is this? Five? Is this not enough? I don't think it's enough, right? Five, 
Untap it, down to three, up to eight? No, that's right. That works. I think Cityscape Leveler was a pretty good draw chat. Turn three Cityscape Leveler, anyone? So they're, <laughs> they were going to pick your poison. All right, keep this one. I'm going to put back a oddity. Adult will need both. It do be like that, Aaron. It do be like that sometimes. All of Storm Giant. Green source would be nice. I'm going to play this on as a 2-3 that helps juice Nykthos a little. Puts a little pressure on him. Are you running MTG on a supercomputer? I mean, I bought a nice computer like five years ago. So I, mine doesn't lag, I guess, as much as some people's. But I have been playing Magic Online for a long time, and I know all the tricks... I know all the tricks. They killed my elf chat. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe your, maybe some part of your PC is bad because it it doesn't care about the graphics card. This is not something like this program was built in two thousand and. And released it, or it was born, it was built in 99 and released in 2000, 2001. So, you might have too much processing power, you know. Also, it goes through uh, memory leaks sometimes. I don't know if it still does. It used to go through memory leaks sometimes. Main phase, free the Fey. Okay, they found slider ops. Program's older than you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. What's up, Travis? All right, any land off the top would be nice so we can put some pressure down. This is why you don't want to play a ton of Pelucranos and Steel Leaf Champion. This exact scenario is why you don't want to play tons and tons of triple green pip creatures. Because you can draw Nykthos and your elf dies, and then they rot in your hand. This is why we used to play Jade Light Ranger. Old Girl Troll, too strong though. Maybe you should run on Windows 7? I mean, I'm running on Windows 11 or whatever. I don't know, man. I don't know why mine runs better than yours, but your graphics card is way better than mine. Mine's a 2080. I think there's no downside to attacking with a voracious hydra it just makes it so that if they want to chump block the oven wall they take extra so holding it back is whatever if if they could deal two damage to it somehow and that mattered i would not attack obviously but yeah i also turn off everything gbs i turn off all the foil animations i turn off all the Summoning sick animation. I have everything turned off. I have no sounds, only alerts, no reminder text. I don't know. I would go to the settings and just make sure everything's turned off, GBs. Maybe that'll help. 
Maybe not, but who knows. Dude, playing as Phoenix is such resident sleeper, man. I'm just snoozing out here. Maybe do a video on the best moto settings. I guess. I don't know. I feel like people only really care about magic strategy. I've offered uh, Magic Online to make videos for them, but I'm just going to concede. Did I concede? Maybe not. Maybe not. We'll wait. Ace of Cakes! I guess if we draw land, we can go double growth. All right, so we go... Wolf Willow. Old Growth. Thanks for the 11 months, Ace of Cakes. Welcome back. Thanks for the Prime Set. All right, well, we'll just untap this since it's going to die anyway. We'll play two elves, get them out. They are a 10, but the old growth troll itself is not really threatening. I guess the turn where I played the oddity, I should have just played troll. But I don't know how much it would have changed. They wouldn't have done the axe, probably. But they didn't discard a phoenix to the axe, so I'm not sure it would have mattered that much. Thunder, if you're if you're gonna play Boris Convoke, you have to learn to live with getting hit with Thoughtseize, and it has to not affect you anymore. You know? That's something that we didn't get to talk about yesterday in our coaching session. But like if you choose the deck that's vulnerable to a certain card, and that card sees ubiquitous play among, you know, many of the top decks in the format, it cannot affect you mentally. You have to have a, a strong mental game. You have to be forged in steel. Dirty, please don't talk about that shit in my chat. Thank you. Exactly, Aaron. Aaron knows once you once you you play against Leyline of the Void one time, the second time it should be nothing. You know, the second time you should feel nothing. You should have a plan, right? Your plan to beat Thoughtseize, right? is the stuff we talked about yesterday with the, the um, wedding announcements and the showdowns of the Scalds. But, like, if you don't have them in your deck, like we were planning on cutting them, things can get a little more difficult. Or, you know, if you just don't draw them or your opponent makes you discard them. there It's an imperfect response to a perfect piece of interaction. The witnesses... Mm -hmm. What the business is. More afraid of Soren than Leyline? Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, we'll make a troll. We'll make another troll. And make a 2 2 as well. We just got a shove, I think. Vampire Red Egg one for Weekend for RCQ. Uh, I mean, what's your experience with both? Is there any sort of card availability issue? Given no card availability issues, I would say Rectos Vampires is the de facto best deck. Uh, it's, it's Phoenix Vampires are de facto best decks. And then there's Amalia, which I think is great. And then 
If you are into Niv, I think Niv, but I don't really like playing Niv. And then lastly, uh, Mono Red. And I think Mono Red is a great deck if you're able to leverage your aggressive play skills, but uh, not many people are equipped to do that. And the deck is extremely unforgiving. But I, I really like my 60 card main deck. Yes, shoveling 80 cards does suck. I agree. Ah, uh, thanks, Frank. Appreciate you. Oh, yeah, we're longtime friends, and we've both been playing forever, so it's easy. Easy for us. So, Frillback, uh, Hearse. I don't like Cage because it doesn't stop Cruise. These sharp eyes feel mid. So I just cut Voracious Hydra. Pick your poison maybe against the birds. I think I'm gonna leave it though. Is Ross still playing the events or is he the only commentary guy now? Uh he played in the team event in Rich uh Rich Richmond recently. Play first. Got a mulligan. I mean, we'll keep. I'm going to put back one of the five drops because I assume my elf's dying. We'll go turn on elf, and then if our elf dies, we'll probably plot Trailblazer on three instead of casting it. And if we get to plot it on two, I'll happily do that. Oh, yeah, let's go. And now, even if they kill my elf here... We can maybe play a four drop next turn. Oh, wow. Okay, well, we get to go Trailblazer into Cavalier. Okay, so this is getting cast. And then we're going to do some maths. Two, three. So we can't troll plus Cavalier, so let's just Cavalier. You know, I mean, this growing obviously sucks, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm at here. Short and Max says, lost to an Amali player in top eight last weekend who literally didn't under understand how Explore worked. Not sure how they made it a top eight. Well, the deck's good. And they say, this is the combo. They say these cards together combo, but they don't know how the Explore works like inside the engine or whatever. I don't know. That happens a lot more than you'd think. Like a uh, Mono Green Devotion era when it was fully powered with Karn. You know, I played against plenty of people who didn't know how to do the infinite combo with the artifact out of the graveyard. They're probably going to take Aether Gust here. Yeah. They're tapped out, though. So let's attack for five, and then we'll do some fun stuff. We don't get to draw cards anymore. Bobby never bluffed the combo? Yeah. Look. Built different, etc. Yeah, I think not having festival is a mistake. The more I'm playing, the more it's like we just need to increase the density of important three fours. Uh, but having like uh, these types of games where we just have a massive amount of mana, where we're just like unable to have like a, a superior payoff, the voracious hydra is just something we need to board in against aggro decks and board out the storming the festivals. 
But the Voracious Hydra has looked a lot worse today than it did yesterday, and I think that's just because we played different matchups. Yeah, we're in trouble. Oh, well, here we go. If we attack with the troll, they go uh, take five, chump one, eat this, and it goes on the land, and I think that's just worse than eating a token. They found Phoenix. They got opt off of the free the fight. Another Phoenix discard, brutal. I think I'm just gonna concede here. The deck feels a little awkward. We're two and one though after this loss. I guess we'll just keep playing. We'll see what we draw. Maybe we just draw. Do we board in Cityscape Leveler? No. We didn't board in anything that can really get rid of this. What can I even draw that matters? All right, GG. Okay. Oh, another mirror. That's the we found the good matchup chat. It's the mirror. We draw a land. We'll probably go cure into elf. If we don't draw a land, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. Oh, uh, don't have it. Don't have untap plus another thing, please. Untap plus another thing is always so demoralizing. So I was missing your second land drop. All right, let's go Oath, look for a land. And I guess I'll attack the Cure for one. There's some chance I'm able to kill it later with an Ulvamald Oddity with Haste. So next turn, we can go Trailblazer. One, two, three, Trailblazer, one, two. If I draw a land, I can go Cure, Trailblazer. I guess I can also go Trailblazer, Trailblazer. It's tough. I don't know. I really want to draw a land there. It's a double-edged sword, though, you know? Sometimes you just draw nothing. Sometimes you hit it all. Lair the Hydra? What are my opponents doing? What are they doing? I'll take three. I'll take three. Give me a land so I can kill this Kiora and ruin their life. All right, well, I'm going to attack the Cure for four, so if they want to untap, they lose the Cura. I don't know if this is right, but I really wanted to land so I could just kill it. Next turn, if I draw land, I can go Cure Outcaster, maybe. I probably got to go back up to four Oath. Maybe it's four Oath 22 lands. Maybe I need to stop messing around. Yeah, so now they go storm the festival. This is kind of what I was hoping would happen if I didn't draw the land. Or this is what I assumed was coming because of them not doing anything with five mana. Leyline Cavalier. Okay. See if they find Nykthos. They don't. They do get a lair though. Alright, I'm going to play a Kiora. And an elf and say go. Pretty huge stark mana difference here. Me not drawing the second land or third land. I kept a one lander. I guess only four draws because we were maybe we we're on the draw. I think we're on the draw. We had a lot of looks for a land and missed a bunch. And we got one window where we could have severely punished them and didn't hit. But now they just get to go storm the festival crazy and the 
Ley line on their side looks great, even though I'm way losing even without it being in play. If it was anything that had two pips, it would be the same, and it would be like a creature in play. Like if it were just a Pelucranos or Elder Gargaroth or something. All right, you win. I quit. All right, we'll be on the play, and now that we know the matchup, we're going to go some Frillbacks in, Cityscape in, uh, and a Baseju. And I think I was cutting the rookies. I think rookie is just a mid card. And then even Voracious Hydra. But the thing is that Voracious Hydra looked great yesterday. And and it's looked bad today. And it's because yesterday I kept playing against aggro decks and boarding it in. And it looked awesome there. And now I'm playing against a bunch of Mirrors and Thoughtseize and Phoenix decks. And it's bad against the Phoenix decks and the Thoughtseize decks. So just about finding the right balance. But every time I draw Trailblazer, it looks awesome. And all we're doing is kind of experimenting to see the if we can find the right home for Trailblazer or the right shell for it. And the, the Storm and the Festivals are probably correct. And it's just dumb not to play them because they just give you such a crazy mana sink. All right, well, this is a very good hand on the play against them. I'm hoping I draw another one drop uh, for turn two, so I can go Kiora Elf on two as well. You thought I was abnormally unlucky with the storms? Maybe. I wasn't hitting creatures very much. I was hitting a bunch of Wolfalos, lands, and elves. And that it felt really bad not hitting a creature. Oh, it's a good drop. Probably should have four in my deck. Take the forest. Just need a land drop for next turn. Waiting, what you're waiting, what you're waiting, what you're waiting for. Oh, they have Hydra too. Gross. Well, that ruins a lot of my plans. But we can still... Trailblazer or Oddity. Get a draw card here, and the next one we'll start getting to draw two cards. Next turn, we'll probably fight Elf. We'll see. We can do a lot of stuff next turn. All right, so let's go Ulvenwald Oddity. We'll draw two. And then we'll untap Nykthos. This is six. So we'll go Voracious Hydra for four. And we'll go fight the Voracious. Draw two. And then we'll kill Kiora. Pretty good turn. Nice. Are in the draw. 
You want anything? Want to change? I still don't. I don't think we want pick your poison. It's just maybe some number. Maybe like two. I like the frillback still though, but maybe frillback's just worse. A troll. Troll's kind of a troll. Oh, yeah. This is Garuda Valley. That's yeah, pretty good. We have the turn one elf, turn two, Vrace Hydra, fight your elf sequence that we can do, which is sick. All right, they didn't start with Leyline. So we don't have to be too afraid of early Nykthos. And they didn't start with Elf either. So all things considered, this is great for me. Song's a banger, I agree. Oh, nice, Scoot. You should play it. They've done a bunch of remasters of it in various platforms, and it's an uh, excellent game. I replayed it like six years ago or seven years ago or something, and it... Was still awesome. I think I either played it right before Breath came out or right after Breath, after I finished Breath. Mm, no play, huh? Troll? All right, so let's go land, Wolf Willow, untap it, Cavalier, draw a card. Get a Lair of the Hydra, nice. Your turn. We don't want to kill Troll because it gives them extra mana. Uh, their Nykthos is juiced here, though. And they can play a five drop of their own, but we can make a huge racist hydra that fights as long as the uh big boy himself is not bringing back anything terrifying. We'll probably do that. I mean, I have a lot of mana for next turn, though. I can do a lot of stuff. I'm not going to play the force until I know what land I want to play. Oh, did they think they could storm? Hmm. I stage you on my Nyctos, sure. Look, I have another Nyctos. That's my biggest pet peeve with legendary lands that are powerful. It's like, if you blow one up, they just probably have a second one in hand, you know? All right, so let's go Oath. Another Cav. So let's uh, make seven, we'll play Cav, and then untap and play Voracious for a million. All right, so let's go untap. Actually, let's just make a 2020 and attack for the win next turn. Uh. Let's fight it. I think I'm going to make them sack an enchantment too. They'll sack the oath, but it'll maybe uh, make it so that they're 100% dead next turn. This is why I'm not the biggest fan of the pick your poison in the matchup because of oath. But they have like a wolf Will haven as well in the ley line. So I thought maybe it'd be worth, but I mean, we're so far ahead because we just had elf pure Nykthos and they didn't play anything on turn one or two. Uh, Tandy, are you partial to video game music? I got a good one. You maybe want to add to your playlist. Only if I've played the game and love the music from the game. I don't just like video game music in general. Although I'm not, like, against it or whatever. Well, 
was this like a small voracious hydra okay so torster welcome glad to have you all right so we're gonna make a huge hydra and fight their hydra i'm gonna do it for as much as they'll let me all right so let's go one two three troll it's free that's free real estate uh 15 untap nictos Uh, we're on the play with a ramper. I'll keep. Any gambas in chat? Did anybody gamba? Oh, we got a couple gambas. All right. Run out of time, chat. Only a few more moments. You miss working from home? Yeah, it's based. Super believe? Nice. Yeah, I also always have Twitch or something going in the background, even when I'm, you know. Portable Holt. All right, we're going to Trailblazer plot, I think, maybe. No, let's just go Trailblazer Oath. And we'll just curve naturally if we hit the land. Torster, thanks for the prime sub. Appreciate you. Lurkers, rise up. Lurkers, if you have a prime sub laying around and you're in chat more than once a week, I'd appreciate a sub with the Twitch primes. But it is what it is. I appreciate you all being here. And I thank you so much. I've never seen Temporary Lockdown and Portable Hole in the same deck, personally. And I would not recommend anyone do that. Take your Bezos bucks, yes, sir. All right, let's play Oddity and try to resolve draw a card. Sensor, okay. So it is control. I was thinking it was like something else because Portable Hole is just an anomaly these days. The fact that this is Sensor is also weird. Usually it's Jawari because of the guaranteed land drop. The only time you cycle sensor is usually when you need land drop. Octarium says, hey, Tandy, just try to league with the new Mono Green build, easy 4-1. Have you thought about tribute to the world tree? No, that's a cool idea, though. That's a really cool idea. I think the fact that it costs too much, like it costs three green. The fact that it costs the, the three green is tough. Wow, it worked. Get to draw a card, and they don't have a second white for what she calls it. They probably have Deluge, so I will attack with the Trailblazer pressure. Yeah, that sounds like a cool idea. I'll think about it. I'd probably do that if I like, play 22 lands. But I still think maybe Pelucranos is better because it allows you to trigger the other draw effects. How often do you update the Slickshot Guide on Patreon? Well, I've only ever written the one. And then the card's only been out for about a month and, an, and a month and a half or so. Um, you're more than welcome to join the Patreon and ask me about the deck at any point. And I will give you my honest assessment and answers as often as I can. Let's go Cavalier. And then if they counter this, we'll attack for nine. If they don't counter this, we draw a card to get another land. Blair the Hydra is looking like it's going to be very bad for them no matter what they do. Odwar bounce that guy. Okay, well, if we have another land, we can plot it. Okay. Or we just do that. Uh, troll. Any order's fine. So we'll go cast trailblazer, cast troll. Draw a card. No farewell, please. I mean, they have portable hole in their deck. We're going to put them to seven, and they're, if they cast a wrath effect, I think they're dead to the lair.
And if they cast a different type of Wrath, Cavalier puts the Uvanwall back in the deck. Okay. So we want to draw Uvanwald or another Cavalier? I don't know. I think I'm still going to go for the kill. So the... Ah, oh, crap. Okay, so the first one's going to be on bottom. So this first one is going to target... A Cavalier of Thorns. And the second one's going to target... The Old Mold Oddity. And then the Troll. This is going to go here. Oh, so this one's going to resolve first. So this one's a yes, and then the second one's a no. Because I need to put uh, pressure on the table with haste and attack with the lair. So I have a lethal attack, but two threats. And so one removal spell, they still take damage. Okay, well now they're just dead to the lair, unless they have a one blue bounce spell. Unless I'm dumb. Yeah, I think I'd rather go to 4 out than 2 out though, Scooter. Alright, uh, control deck. What do we like? Maybe Cityscape in case they have Lockdown. I don't know, man. I mean, Portable Hole is annoying, but it's not that annoying. Let's fill back. Sage you. I don't think Stonebrain's good. I don't think Pick Your Poison's that good, but I mean, a couple things that are like natural bust em ups. I didn't elf that game on one, and I think that that's fine in the matchup because they wrath. So we're going to cut two elves, bring in the land. I think I'm going to keep the oath and the wolf willows. And oh, the race hydras are bad. Let's get these out. And then we'll go maybe. Leveler, maybe the elves come back in. Fine. Dome rebate looking good. Oh, yeah. Up a game. Let's go. Well, I think four oath was the default for a very long time. And the third oath happened when someone tried to put cityscape leveler into the main and couldn't figure out what to cut and then everyone just started playing three oath of nissa forever after that and i don't know that that's right but i i feel like when aggro decks are rampant uh three oath is better than four and right now there's a lot of slick shot show off decks which means that three oath is probably right what do you want to see the least against blight emperor farewell uh definitely farewell emperor is like a it's good but not great I mean, it's good. What I really need is a sideboard Planeswalker like uh, Nissa Voices Zendikar to really punish opponents for wrathing me. But that one is not powerful enough. So we need something that's like a, a Garrick Wildspeaker type deal. But Uh, I'm going to take, I guess, Cavalier of Thorns.
Finder is just so fast, kind of hard to spin your mana early on Oath. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, against decks that play Thoughtseize, Oath is great. And a land early and a land late are much different than an Oath early and an Oath late. J Cubs, thanks for the prime sub. Appreciate you. Welcome to the Todd Squad. Ashok. Okay, well, I don't search my deck very much. And milling me. Milling me. Oh, they hit my cityscape. Bummer. I don't know that losing the elf changes the game very much, so I'll just play it. But if I get Wrath here, that's a bummer. I guess I can go Kiora, Lan. I'll get Kiora back, and then I'll go Kiora Troll. That seems pretty good. Oh, no, they kill it. Duh. I know Octarium is going to eat my storms out of the graveyard. Dang. Narset Parter. Get the reveal. Another Narset. Okay, so I think we send three elves at Narset, five at face. I don't really care about the Ashiok. I don't search my deck. Lair's a good pickup. Go ahead and play that. Narset, Narset. And even if they kill an elf, that means the Narset uh, doesn't stick around, or doesn't activate again. All right, so they hit uh, Ovenwald in the cityscape. Order notes. Oh, uh, mono green gamer? Yeah, we are. We're mono green gamers. Three steps ahead. Doesn't do anything for only two mana. We're currently threatening lethal, so I'm just going to fire up the lair and attack with everybody at face. They kill one creature. I think they're still dead. Because we're threatening lethal with these, and then lair is just another troll cavalier. I guess we're for eight, we're one short if they kill the cavalier, but they didn't kill the cavalier like four turns straight, so we'll see. Do we think it'll make a comeback? I think so. Oh, that's a good draw. Now it's juiced. I don't know if y'all heard that. That was a bad thunder strike. All right, GG, four and one. Okay, so um, this is the second four and one I've gotten in leagues with Outcast Trailblazer. And Outcast Trailblazer effectively feels like a massive upgrade compared to where the deck was before the most recent set was released. And while this build is not necessarily perfect uh, for utilizing it, I thought that the Voracious Hydra, instead of Storming the Festival, would uh, be worthwhile uh, because of its interaction and because my storms just felt rather weak. But with that said, after playing this league, not playing against any aggro decks, the Voracious Hydras looked pretty bad. And there was multiple games where I was starting to flood a bit and I think uh, Storm the Festival would have been excellent. And so I think the Voracious Hydras should probably just be in the sideboard. And then against aggro, we just board out Storm, board in Voracious Hydra. And I think that's fine. Sharp by Rookie looked really good one game where we drew it. It looked pretty mid another game where we drew it and didn't have anything to pump it. I think that uh, it's probably not worthwhile. My my gut says we just go minus two Sharp Eyed for fourth Oath and a 22nd land, probably a second Beseju. And then we uh, play four of the Storm of the Festival of Voracious Hydra. My uh, instincts are also saying that Ovenwald Offsity is great. And we might want to play a third. But playing three is a lot, and 
there are some spots and matchups where it's pretty lackluster, especially on the front half. But uh, it is a nice little combo kill with Nykthos and Storming the Festival and stuff. So I think it could be solid. Uh, sideboard, pick your poison, felt lackluster, but we didn't play against Vayne Ripper. Drillback looked really good the one game where we drew it. Obstinate Bailoth against the uh, Waste Knot decks actually looked not very good. So we may cut the Obstinate Bailoths. Uh, Stonebrain, lackluster as usual. Uh, Unlicensed Hurst, I don't know if it's even better than Scavenging Ooze, but it is what it is. Cityscape Leveler looked awesome. I don't think you want to, but I think the one of is is uh, a home run. Uh, one Graph Digger's Cage can maybe be two uh, if we're not playing Storm the Festival, but since we're going to be going back to Storm the Festival, I'm probably just going to cut it. And then if we move the 22nd lane to the main with the Beseju, then we won't need to land in there. So this is going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for hanging. I'm Tandy. Make sure to follow our sponsors, Apex Gaming. Uh, you can check out apexgaming.gg for information about their tournament series. I do commentary with Ross Merriam. Uh, over their live events and we'll be heading out to Caldwell, Ohio to uh, cast one of those tournaments in uh, mid-July. We're going to be doing a double modern open weekend, one on Saturday and one on Sunday with $5,000 cash and prizes for each for each day. Uh, check out Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a great website for building and sharing deck lists. Uh, you can check the link description if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, or you can hit exclamation point deck or deck list in chat if you'd like a link to my Moxfield page with all of our lists, including the one we played today. And lastly, thank you so much to Games of Comics Paradise. Uh, games of Comics Paradise is a game store out of Fairfax, Virginia. They specialize in trading card games. If you need some singles for your Pokemon deck or you want to pick up some brand new Disney Lorcana cards, make sure to head on over to gcparodice.com and uh, put your order in today. That's gcparodice.com. I'm Tandy. I write articles on my Patreon about new decks. I do sideboard guides. I do coaching. Hit me up on patreon.com slash Tandy if you're interested in any of that. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.